people would be looking for me. They were like, Fabio, where were you? And I was like, I just went to Thailand for a few days. Like, yeah, oh, we, so we thought you went back home and you didn't yeah. say goodbye. And then yeah. people would like track me down and look for my boss and like, where's Fabio? And welcome back to another episode of Korea Unfiltered. We are currently very high in anxiety. Um, in the last two hours, a lot has happened. <laughs> I want to cry. I want to cry. I want to cry, y'all. But today's guest is a really special guest. He has uh, no shirt on out here. He's giving eye candy. He's giving body. He's giving energy. Welcome to the show, Fabio. Woo! <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, this is Fabio. But would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Fabio. I'm from Montreal, Canada. And I'm happy to be here with you, Paris. Woo! he's not american <laughs> <laughs> the first time he introduced himself because we've you know guys i have problems with the show but the first time he introduced himself he kind of shaded everyone who's not montreal no he, he shaded y'all <laughs> he was like quebec who <laughs> I'm, I'm just very proud of where i come from yeah why are you so proud about where you come from um just of um because of history mm -hmm. Uh, we have a history that comes from conflicts. Yeah. And I think everywhere you see that, it, there's always a lot to, to discover there. Yeah. That's why. So if you ever go to um, Canada, mm -hmm. the, the province of Quebec, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the capital city is, is Quebec City, which is beautiful to visit. And then Montreal is the economic capital. Yeah. And that's where everything happens. Mm -hmm. And it's, <laughs> it's interesting because you'll find uh, there's a, a blend of English and French. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is why I speak this way, yeah. and and for us it's pretty much one language. Oh, okay. So they're oh, they're you called it Franglish, right? Yeah, yeah. And therefore the way people think is also based on on the languages that they use. Of course, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. have that synergy between languages and, and different types of people, and then yeah. you get immigrants from all over the world yeah. who are who are free to use the one the language that they feel more comfortable mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that is interesting to discover. Yeah. Interesting. And then we are, yeah, we have the castles and everything. That's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's cool too, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, what do you do in Korea currently? I work in entertainment in Korea. Mm -hmm. I'm predominantly uh, a, a fitness model or a sports model, how, it, uh, how they call it here. As you can see. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, never, I never flex, you know, I never flex. <laughs> Look how small my muscle is compared to his guys. Like, oh. No. <laughs> she works out. Actually, <laughs> He's I, I, like, <laughs> no, actually, I do also. Uh, yeah. I am also a commercial model, uh -huh. and, and I do a little bit of acting as well. Mm -hmm. So I have to make myself as small as possible oh. for everything that is not sportswear. Oh, that's true. Yeah, like streetwear yeah. or uh, like lookbooks, normal lookbooks, or books. like whatever is supposed yeah. to be sold in Europe or whatever. I, I have to look like this. But actually, yeah. people think I'm huge. But if you see me in person, yeah. um, no, nah, it's fine. I, I weigh. Uh, you know, I'm lost in in pounds now. I forgot. Oh, I don't so know I, pounds I'm, either. Now I'm I in, know kgs I'm, now. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't know I fully transitioned anymore. to kgs. Yeah. So, uh, like today, I'm probably seventy six kilogram. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I diet hard, so yeah. it's so I, I live at five percent body fat. So it's, that's the way it works. So I'm, I'm smaller than you think in yeah, person. Yeah. yeah. I remember the first time I met you. Like you said that you are very like consistent in going to the gym. Do you? How do you? function in that way as somebody who does not diet or go to the gym like that i would find it so hard to like you know make sure i only eat this i can't eat that like does that not take a toll in your life or are you just so used to it absolutely not yeah. not toll on me yeah. um because i would not use the word diet i, I use the word diet because that's what people like you, to hear yeah, yeah. um like they want to have like the special recipe and everything mm. or, the reality is uh, it's very easy for me because it's a lifestyle Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Uh, all my life. Because <laughs> I, I do oh. have to say, um, my family is vegan back home. So I grew up vegan. Okay. Therefore, I didn't really have a love for food. Mm -hmm. Like food is is uh, nourishment. Yeah, it's not a necessity. It's <laughs> nourishment. I didn't like the food. So I, I didn't love eating. So I yeah. just ate when I had to. Yeah. My mom yelled at me and then I ate. That's, <laughs> that's how it worked. Yeah. And until uh, I got into sports mm -hmm. and then I realized that um, macronutrients actually matter. Mm -hmm. that the type of food that you intake will, will affect the way you perform in sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then that's when I started eating meat, like, like chicken and yeah. like poultry. Uh, and I was 18. Oh. Meaning I don't have cravings. Yeah. Because I, I didn't... I didn't have them when I was young. Yeah. So um, I would say uh, like 
I was uncultured when it comes to food until I became an adult. And you so, got to learn for yourself. Yes, but also what happens is it's easier to control yourself when mm -hmm. you don't have these habits. That's true. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, like, why do we need to eat three meals a day? I think because society says so. Yeah, society yeah. told you uh, there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So <laughs> we do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then you, you go to school and they teach you the same thing as well. But uh, how about listening to our bodies yeah. and refueling when we need yeah, yeah. instead of uh, having reserves? Mm -hmm. Because essentially that's what we do. We we are not active enough in the, in the society that we live in, whether it is South Korea or... Uh, I'm talking about mostly Western countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if you do have to walk a lot more here, Year, still not enough yeah, compared okay. to the the average person who would eat out processed food and everything mm -hmm. the calories have expended mm. so uh, it's true that we do walk a lot in korea but then the food is very heavy as well mm -hmm. the the um, carbohydrates are everywhere here the sodium levels are high you feel bloated all the time it's very yeah. easy to to walk your 10,000 step and thinking that yeah you did good today mm -hmm. but but then you refuel by going to get some chicken or, or, or whatever. cake, yeah. <laughs> or, cake. Yeah. or you go to these nice cafes and they have oh, these uh sogun pang oh my god i love that yeah, the, I would say the only difference is yeah. um, discipline. Discipline is my favorite word in, in English and in French as well. Mm -hmm. Just because the, the difference between a child, and I've said it many times, but the difference between a child and an adult is that uh, children want what's best for them all the time mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So now they feel like this, they want it now. Mm -hmm. And parents have to step in and say, no, I know, you know, ice cream is great, but you don't need it every time, you know. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, uh, especially once you start working, you could just eat your favorite food all the time. Yeah, and buy anything. You, you live alone. Yeah. You know, you, your favorite food is ice cream. You could mm -hmm. have a diet that consists of only ice cream. Mm -hmm. You won't do it because you know it's not it's not the right thing to do, yeah, right? Yeah. But I'm just I'm just saying like some people eat fried chicken every day, some people eat Ew. burgers <laughs> every day, and and balance is everything. So I say I don't yeah. diet. I have yeah. a lifestyle that allows me to to be happy in many ways. Mm. Meaning, I realize that when I eat good food and I'm alone, mm -hmm. I tend to eat faster and not enjoy it as much, uh -huh. and I just forget especially if it's early during the day. Mm. Uh, I never remember what breakfast I eat. Oh, so okay. I don't eat breakfast. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, um, and also, I don't need that energy. So I will, need, I will eat for, to, to fuel my day, mm. I guess. Yeah. So I if I'm working out in the morning, yeah. then I'll have, I'll have a meal in the morning. It will still be small, but I'll have enough to do what I, got to, what mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. to do. And it's actually not that hard to, to balance once you're... You're out of the system, mm. the system that tells you how you should eat yeah. and you listen to yourself. And and once you do, you go to a cleansing. Actually, I recommend for everyone to go keto for a little bit mm -hmm. just because it's it's very good to remove the triggers because mm -hmm. there's a lot that we eat that have uh, repercussion on how we feel. Of course. Uh, like too much sugar will affect how you think, how yeah. you act, you know, yeah. your energy levels throughout the day. Then work is over and then you just crash because it's time to crash. Mm -hmm. Because you've been crashing every day at five o'clock because, yeah. you know, that's the way the system works. Yeah. But once you remove all of that and you have a hard reset, and mm -hmm. I, say, uh, I say it's hard because your body will be craving and asking, demanding for, for this food that you've removed. Yeah. But not because you need them. It's because it's, it's five o'clock and we're supposed to have, uh, you know, dessert now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to feel good after work. <laughs> 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 you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so so I, I've learned to... Um, basically uh, be emotionless when it comes to food, mm -hmm. which allows me to, uh, the bar is low, so I'm very easy to impress when I eat as well. Mm. <laughs> so, so basically, like if I eat something good, I, I, I like cake just as much as you do. Yeah. It's just I, I don't have the craving, so it's easy for me to say not now, right? But if I will have it, I will have it in, with friends with companions with it's it's, it's much better yeah. because now you're associating um a, a feeling of pre pleasure with positive memories mm -hmm. so it makes it amazing it yeah. makes it great yeah. right so that's the way i like to eat uh i like to eat like a robot when i'm alone <laughs> and then I, I like to keep the good food for when i'm with, with friends. friends so you don't need to worry about me i i can't eat i can i don't have i'm not a big drinker yeah. but i can eat and drink and it's it's not a problem i'll mm -hmm. fix it in the future so you've gotten used to like yeah and then i'll be uh, i'll be on set 
ripped in the problem. <laughs> At least you're getting your job done. How did you end up coming to Korea first? I've been in Korea for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, How long? Maybe, <laughs> maybe under, the radar, <laughs> under the radar for a long time as well. Yeah. Uh, it's been nine years. That's so freaking long. Yeah, 2015. Jesus. I've been traveling for longer than that. So yeah. since uh, 2013, the first time I came here yeah, for about yeah. a month and 2014 and then 2015 was the mm -hmm. move mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of 2015. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. time goes fast. Yeah, that's true. It flies. Bro, the last five years of my life, I don't know what has been happening. <laughs> it just sped past. And it's, I think it, specifically for us, because I, if you live in Korea as an expat, you're mm -hmm. probably on a one-year visa, mm -hmm. or if you're lucky, on a three-year visa. And well, most people are on a one-year visa, so they literally live one year out at a time. Yeah. And time goes fast when you do that. That's true. It's just because you, there's so many, so many things you want to do mm -hmm. and try and mm -hmm. experience and yeah. things you want to see. And then like, whoop, six months. So, you know, you, you start slow Almost and then now you do, you do everything very yeah, quickly. Yeah. And, and then now you, you have to think uh, deep introspection. Do I stay one more year or not? And then now you do it again. Mm. And time just flies and flies. And also, it's, you know, it's a new country for most people. Yeah. So there's, there's so much yeah. to do, to yeah. see. You know, uh, and also and one year, we, we were talking about Korea here because that's where we live. Yeah. But we're surrounded by beautiful nations like all over Asia. Mm -hmm. So nothing stops you from just jumping on a two hour flight Japan to Japan Thailand, and yeah. like all of Southeast Asia. And yeah, so that's the reason why time flies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I would even add um, not many people who have been here for a long time have planned to be here for a long time. <laughs> because <Me>. again, <laughs> we're, it's uh, yeah. one year at a time thing, right? Yeah. So um whenever koreans are, are, are surprised when i say how long i've been here mm -hmm. and then they like they they usually ask like are you going to be here all your life i'm like um look uh if you most people who, who come for the first year mm -hmm. uh, that's when they do the exploration and then if they like it yeah. then they stay a second year most people who stay for two years will be more likely to stay longer yeah but regardless it's not up to them because you might want to stay. The government's like, <laughs> doesn't mean nah. that you'll be allowed to stay, <laughs> yeah. that you'll be given the opportunity to stay. Yeah. You might have uh, ambitions that won't lead anywhere here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, it's, so we do have to reconsider all the time. And it's very hard to plan for, I guess uh, we're privileged because we come from countries where we have options back home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not like we, we, we gave up everything to come here. Mm -hmm. uh, because depending on where you come from, you might actually, uh, day one in Korea, be looking to settle here forever, mm -hmm. depending on where you come from. But it's usually not the case for people who come from where we are from. Yeah. So uh, it's usually um, year by year. And then uh, as you go, then you realize where you are at that moment. And you still have that option to say, yes, mom, I'll, I'll be back. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen my new nephew. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, no family is, is still remote. You mm -hmm. know, I, yeah, I still sure. have to wait until the middle of the night to call at home. Mm -hmm. So uh, you miss birthdays. And so, so it, it's not really easy yeah. to, to commit to that type of life. It's actually very hard and, and can feel very lonely. Mm -hmm. So it's not for everyone. Uh, so some people will try again. So they'll go back home and come back. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, time flies. Time flies. Right, very, very much so. But mm -hmm. what brought you to Korea? Love brought me to Korea. Ew. Yeah, the <laughs> typical answer, I guess, maybe. No, that's not a typical no? answer. <laughs> it's actually very different compared mm. to what people have been saying. Usually it's K-pop, K-drama, oh, okay. teaching, you know. But mm. for you, love, that's a very different one. And yeah. what do you mean by love brought you to Korea? Uh, I mean that um, back in Canada, I, I met someone mm -hmm. who became my lover. And so that was, I guess, 2012. And <laughs> yeah, Sorry, long, that's a long, long time, time ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, since since uh, she she was Korean, mm -hmm. studying in Canada, eventually she had to go back, right? right? So we were like, well, let's go discover Korea together. Mm -hmm. And and so I went on my first trip to Korea. It was just a month, a month vacation. Uh, almost you say that that's like that's normal. Yeah, it, it's it's, it's good normal. to have um, like something. <laughs> some good things about working corporate is sometimes you, you get the, these big companies where you can have two months off if you want. Dang. So I, w I would always so take nice. one month to travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so nice. Yeah. Or more. It's usually two weeks. Yeah, two week I, I, I worked in banking, so I was I had like eight weeks. <laughs> Plus unlimited sick Crazy. days. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I came 2013 for my first time yeah. visiting Korea for about a month. I had my birthday here. It was exceptional. And again, I, s I always tell people, uh, 
everything you do is even better if you do it with the right person mm -hmm. and at the right time. So if you're thinking the person you love, it's your birthday, it's a new country, it's a new continent, it's new languages, like there's so many things. So when I came back home, I missed Korea so oh, much. Wow, yeah. Because I had a time of my, I was working so hard for such a long time. Yeah. Because, you know, the society tells us we have to be efficient. We have to be uh, very good at what we do. We yeah. have to make money, be successful, um, you know, so all these things. And then and we tend to be uh, to get lost mm. in what we actually want to do. That's true. Because we, we don't have time to think about what we want to do. We make yeah. decisions when we're not ready to make these decisions. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a good break. It, it opened my mind. It was not my first time traveling, but it was my first time being in Asia, mm -hmm. which is very different from where I was from. From North America? Or, or I guess all different. of my influencers as well, because yeah. even though I grew up with so many Asian uh, students in my school, like we had so many Chinese and, you know, like people from all over the world where I, where I come from, it's still not the same. It's not? Because they integrate really well. They do? And some of my friends actually, even I forget that they were immigrants. Like, like they came when they were like 12. Yeah. I forget yeah. because... Yeah. It's been such a long time and they integrate pretty well and then languages are not an issue anymore. So you don't physically think about them being an immigrant. You're yeah, just another, at you're all. just another Canadian. Which yeah. is the beautiful thing about um, countries where we receive people mm -hmm. co constantly. Mm -hmm. We have a steady influx of, of, uh, of immigrants mm -hmm. and then they become us. Yeah. I, I read something about 20% uh, of um, Canadian citizens not being born in Canada. So oh, that's, okay. that's, that's a lot of people. I think in America it's way more than that. Probably, yeah. yeah. You guys have ten times more people. You go to Vancouver; it's it's fifty five percent minorities, oh, and right. half of them. That's a huge percentage, fifty five. Yeah, it's pretty much Asia. Yeah, also. it's yeah. not just like minorities; it's like Asian minorities, oh, right? Oh, okay. And then you go to Toronto; it's like forty five percent minorities. Oh. Montreal is about thirty five percent, forty percent. So okay. no matter where you are, if because there's only like three cities that mm. matter in, in Canada, <laughs> and everything else is like yeah. Okay. If, if you're not, if you're not in these, these three spots, I mean. <laughs> It could be different, but <laughs> yeah. in our cases, uh, we we do have these influences, and then they you get to eat traditional food, and mm. it tastes authentic because it's actually made by these people, mm. and but still not the same because so. my Korean Canadian friends. Uh, I used to think they were very Korean mm -hmm. until I came to Korea. <laughs> and you're like, you guys are not even Korean. And then it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're fake. No, 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 no. <laughs> you just act Korean. <laughs> you guys are losers. <laughs> <laughs> no. But it's, it's, it's true. It's a beautiful place. And I do recommend for everyone yeah. to come and visit and, you know, just take it all in yeah. and come with a, a positive mindset mm -hmm. Or, or neutral at worst, and just because mindset. it's not your home. So things work yeah. differently, and they've been working this way for a very long time. It's a very well-established society, very mm -hmm. proud people. So um, I think it's good to come in with respect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and just, you know, appreciate the little things that they do and the yeah. big things too, because K-pop is major, right? It's very big. But to come back to me uh, moving to Korea. Moving for love. Yeah, love. So, yeah. so relationship, and then eventually um, the, the partner had to move back to Korea to graduate. So it came a second year, 2014, another month, uh, and I came with a friend at that mm -hmm. time. So that was a little bit of a different experience because I still had my birthday, still had everything. It was fine. Uh, travel within the country a lot. Like Jeju was amazing. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, since um, the, the ex-girlfriend was working now, mm -hmm. then it was me and my friend. Uh, he was actually mm -hmm. my, my roommate from home. Yeah. We worked at the same job. We lived together and we just came to Korea because mm -hmm. we had time. And and now um, we just got a guest house for like, actually for both years. We, we got a guest house for the whole time. Yeah. And it was like the, the whole basement and we had like rooms and everything. It was fine. It was comfortable. Mm -hmm. But also what happened, it slowed down the process of being a, a tourist. Because it's, it's not the same to, to travel for five days yeah. or, or two and a half days here. Then you fly to the next destination and you're, not, you, you're still looking at, at your pictures mm. and you, you, you still can't f feel what it was, you know. Yeah. But when you have time and also you have downtime, because now you're, the, the ex was working. So mm -hmm. I had to like fill my day with stuff. Yeah. And, and also now I was alone. So without the, the, the support, the Korean the support. The speaking for you. Yeah, that's very, now. very different as well. Yeah. Like go to Jeju uh, week three in Korea. It's yeah. not the same, you know. Yeah. 
Time. Yeah. It's not the same. Which is okay because actually, if you want to know how it is to live somewhere, just stay for over three, four weeks, and then yeah. now, now you you'll get a get uh, you're gonna get a get sense of uh, how it works. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was another positive experience. And then a year later, um, since I was a banker, uh, I was uh, offered a, an opportunity <laughs> to retire. Yeah. So I was retired. At a very I was young made age. to retire. Yeah. Or. Uh, uh, I guess offered a retirement package. That's mm -hmm. the way to say it. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, anyone who had uh, seven years of banking or or was fifty five years of age was offered um, a retirement package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't what I wanted, so it had to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I would I was pushed away while the lawyers uh, dealt with this. Yeah, yeah. Lawyers union and all that fun stuff. Yeah. It took uh, a good three years to settle. That's freaking crazy. So that's. 2015 to 2018, right? So my first. Are you still going to work at this time? In those three years? No, I'm just waiting for my check. Oh, I'm on the books, but just waiting for my check to come in. Oh, for three years. And uh, yeah, <laughs> but no, but it, it's okay because at that point, uh, basically, what it is is if you work in finance like me, and if, especially if you're into uh, investing, mm -hmm. they just came to the conclusion uh, in the whole world that uh, algorithms do a better job than people. Mm because they are predictable. So no, they do not do a better job. It's just that it's more predictable. Yeah. Uh, therefore, we can uh, estimate how much money is coming in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that works really well with the stock. Mm -hmm. And investors love it. Uh, I mean, corporate investors love yeah. it. <laughs> not so the people like, investors. We don't need you, no. Know yeah, so I do, I, I do think that it was an, an amazing job because um, basically my job was to do this, sit mm -hmm. down and interview people and find out, find out what they, their projects were yeah. and deal with the financing and, the, and also the investment. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were talking about getting married and like, do you know how much it cost? I'm talking a long time ago and it was already outrageous. Yeah. yeah we're, we're talking like tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it, yeah. Nothing less than 20000 a long time ago so now it's like forty fifty thousand dollars canadian um korea is very similar as well actually it's basically it's the same price just less of a wedding but same yeah. price <laughs> so it's, a it's like an hour wedding. and an hour and a half an hour and a half stop, stop, you come stop, stop. in <laughs> you, you take your pictures you, you salute then you go eat and you're out yeah you have time to go to the gym and do other things and then that's your wedding that's Ooh. your wedding yeah korea uh, so um so i love what i what i did and also the the knowledge that i got from it because my basically uh how do you become good at this? Mm -hmm. You have to learn a little bit about everything in life. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. let's say if I only have an hour to sit down with you, uh, find out who you are, where you're going, mm -hmm. what uh, you tell me you want, but what I think you want, mm -hmm. and then come back with a solution that will determine the, the trajectory of your life. Because mm -hmm. you're not buying a house without me, unless you have like 500 Gs in your account. <laughs> Yeah, right. So that's yeah. how it works. Yeah. And then eventually we're like, oh, she has savings. Mm -hmm. All right. So step two. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do with it? Do we buy Amazing. do we buy Jordans a Range Rover or do we invest into real estate? Yeah. We buy some equities. Yeah. So so those are all the things that um, because I was too young for the job. Uh, I started I was 21 when I started. So you started really too young. Yeah, you just yeah. you have to be good at interviews. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, it's my skill. Yeah. And then you kind of burn out very quickly because you spend the whole day talking with people and investing and, fo and following the investments. Yeah. And then when it's time to go, people don't really complain about it. When yeah. they tell you, like, here's some money, go away, yeah. you, you take it. Because also, if you work in finance, then you understand when you're no longer needed. Mm. Because I can see that algorithms reduce costs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and make everything predictable. So yeah. then they, they find someone else who will work for like half your pay. And they, they plug in the algorithm and then everything's cool, right? So then I come to Korea and I don't have the skills to work in banking in Korea. So while I'm waiting for that check, I started to teach. Mm. So I, uh, I found a job in, it's called a South Jolanamdo, so yeah. which is the south of South Korea, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful place. It's, um, people call it country. It's not country. Yeah. Still, this, that's, that little town is still 250,000 people. That's a lot of people. Yeah, but for Korean standard, it's, yeah. it's a small town. Especially compared but, to Seoul. So that's so. A, perspectives are very important, right? Yeah. Because I had friends from New Zealand, and they were telling me, you know, the, the whole country is like 4 million. So... <laughs> It's like Seoul. <laughs> so a small town of 250,000 people yeah. who are called country people. Yeah. And I lived in a, a new town. It was very comfortable for me because it, it was a new town. So it was very modern, but not too far away from uh, farms. Mm -hmm. You could just go to the farmer's market and get some real food Ooh. and everything. So and then also people are people are from uh, Jolado are considered very warm hearted. Mm -hmm. uh, they're 
consider some of the, um, the warmest people in Korea. Yeah, so the, very welcoming. Yeah. You know, I, I used to go on short vacations. I used mm -hmm. to like fly to Thailand for five days mm -hmm. and I would come back and people would be looking for me. They oh. were like, Fabio, where were you? And I was like, I just went to Thailand for a few days. Like, yeah, oh, we, so we thought you went back home and you didn't yeah. say goodbye. And yeah. then people would like track me down and look for my boss and like, where's Fabio? Oh, I'm, I'm so talking sweet. about like the um, Kimpap Jungkook or like the market or like the, the Bongus Pap Bogo yeah, or yeah. Paris Baguette. Yeah. Uh, I used to get so much free stuff from them all the time. So you're like, oh, you're back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's here again. Yeah, they're yeah. so welcoming. So yeah. I, we, we, we would hear a lot about inequalities and the way people are treated. So I always say I can't control um, what people will think about me, especially on day one. Mm. All I can do is uh, put out as much love and positivity and, and, and hope that it comes. some of it comes back to me. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I live my life. Um, also, it helps that my personality, I'm pretty neutral. Mm -hmm. So it means uh, I'm never, I mean, I don't spend that much time on the high mm -hmm. and I'm rarely on the low. Yeah. So I'm neutral, which I think uh, it makes me very base and allows me to be impressed on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So cool people do cool things and it, it impresses me, makes me happy every day. Yeah. But it's very hard to disappoint me because I don't expect anything from anybody. Yeah. yeah. I expect that everyone will look for themselves first mm -hmm. and then maybe if I'm lucky, take care of me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if that's the world, how the world works, mm -hmm. then it's very easy to be heartbroken and feel betrayed. So all I could say to, to people in that situation, especially when you're abroad and you don't have anyone, you don't have family members to call on everyone. Mm -hmm. It's basically you, like you and your little room. Uh, I, I recommend uh, being more level headed and uh, yeah, let people impress you. So don't expect them to to make you feel a certain way, yeah. because then if they don't for all sorts of reasons, then you won't be disappointed. You won't be at oh, Let me down. No, he just wasn't holding you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he wasn't holding you. Yeah, they don't have to take care of you. <laughs> I'm using that. <laughs> you didn't let me down because I wasn't holding you. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm using you know that. how you, you, in dancing, uh, I'm a salsa dancer, so we have to, to dip yeah. uh, people a lot. Yeah. So it's it's based on trust. Yeah. So <laughs> if if I if I dip you, then you have to trust that I will be holding you, yeah, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I wasn't holding you. <laughs> you have yet to disappoint me. When you were talking, you were talking about like how warm-hearted Koreans and the Jeolla hmm. province or were. Jeollado. Jeollado, mm. or Jeollado province were at that time. Yeah. Um, when you ended up coming up to Seoul, was it the same or did you feel like there was a shift in energy? Oh, there was a major shift. Uh -huh. um, but also it wasn't surprising because, it, again, I've traveled here before. Yeah. But uh, living is different. You know, there's a difference between three days and, and one month. And yeah. one month and one year is not the same as well. So in... In uh, Sunshan, for example, or in all of that province or the smaller provinces, there there aren't many foreigners. So they tend to be, uh, if you do make a foreign friend, it'll be your close friend mm. for a while until the, the one year runs up. And that person might be six months in. So, yeah. so it, it's a thing. So you can feel lonely uh, very quick. Very quickly, right? yeah. And it's, it's unexpected as well. The unexpected uh, how fast you can bond with someone mm. and unexpected how quick that person can just be gone mm. from your life. Mm. And then it's still, uh, you have to find a new, replace that friend with yeah, another one. Now they're gone. And people so. come and go, right? Yeah. But in a small town, uh, I would say um, people do a lot of physical activities together because there's distance. Mm -hmm. If you only have uh, four uh, foreigners in one town, it's four of us. Mm. Maybe two of us are friends. Yeah. So then your friends will probably be in a different town in the same province. Mm -hmm. So people would meet for like farewell parties. And at that time we used, we used Facebook and we had these like hiking groups or whatever. And then, yeah, it would just be an amazing time and people will go hard because it's, we have two days and yeah. Monday is back to work and back to uh, loneliness Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Damn. because a lot of people struggle to make Korean friends. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, uh, I used to go back to Seoul every two weeks. Uh, back and forth because I mean the ex lived in Seoul, yeah. so I would have to commute all the time. And for me, four hours in the bus is not long. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have the KTX in that direction. It's not long because I'm Canadian, so that was fine. You know, you just, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you would get to Seoul, first uh, the weather is different. Yeah. Oh, is so it? Yeah. yeah. If like it, in terms of warmer you know, or colder. What's surprising to me is that uh, summer feels heavier in Seoul because. Air doesn't move here. 
mm. because the, the structure of the city is just skyscrapers everywhere. There's no movement of air. So um, people would tell you the south is warm, but there's always a constant breeze. So mm -hmm. you, a constant breeze, so you don't feel it as much. And then you come to Seoul, and it doesn't smell the same. And and you you can feel that oh yeah, winter is colder, summer is warmer, and more humid. It's humid. You as actually well. you actually feel it. You yeah. feel the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though uh, Seoul is more uh, up north, yeah, still feels warmer in summer because of the humidity factor. Yeah. And then it feels uh, colder in winter because of the humidity factor and the fact that the air is not moving around. Yeah. Now people. Uh, I always think that people are affected by the weather around them and also the, the amount of time. Uh, time is our most precious commodity. So when we don't have it, we have to deal with stress mm -hmm. because we, have to, we, we feel like we're not living. Right? So the weather. If, you're, if you live in Jeju, people smile a lot. They're happier. People get out in the sun. Yeah. They look different because they get out in the sun. Yeah. 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 And then you get a soul and then people are, w are walking fast. People jog in the subway. People, people. It's pali pali chop chop, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you're taking your time to look at the menu, you <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you will hear like, the whispers behind you. you. <laughs> you'll hear the whispers because they're still kind of polite, but you'll hear yeah. the whispers behind you. Yeah. You might have someone just bump mistakenly. <laughs> you know, that's that's Absol. how you feel. You feel like the pressure is there, and yeah. it's always there. It's constant. No matter where you are in the city, it doesn't matter if you're in the financial district or if you're in a res residential area. Kids are busy too. What's yeah. the difference? A residential area, you have more kids. Okay, yeah. they're still not playing outside. They got places to, to go. Next hug one. They got yeah. places to go. They don't have time. Yeah. So you do feel that, and it makes. I could say it makes people feel more more cold to mm. you. It's just because also there's more people, so they run into more of you. Yeah. And so you're not really like I know you're unique, but they don't have time to find out. Yeah, right? just, we don't care. So then point. you get placed in the box very quickly. So um, as uh, any person, nobody wants to be, uh, I guess, othered, categorized. Yeah. Especially when it happens very quickly, but um, it will happen. Uh, I think it's it's in, it's in many places of the world where mm -hmm. it, it happens like that. But yeah, it happens quick here, and because it happens it happens quick, it could um, some people could feel like they disrespected a little bit or ignored, which is sometimes or worse. Yeah, yeah, unheard. And and, and yeah, but but still, uh, tons of great people in Seoul, mm -hmm. everywhere in the country. What what I like from Korea is that when you they have that thing they call uh, jong, mm -hmm. if I pronounce it well. Mm -hmm. Is um, they call it Korean love. Mm -hmm. and I like Ejong. Uh, yeah, Ejong. I guess there's a fuller word for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I never understood this uh, until I left uh, Suncheon my very first year, mm -hmm. because I, I literally had to say goodbye to every shop I used to go oh. to. I had to go to, and then they took me out every time too. Oh. So you, you go yeah. to like Ajushi and Juma, and they do take you out as well. Yeah, you know how much drinking that is, but. But I had to do that. I had to say goodbye. And still up to now, we're, we're like eight years later since mm -hmm. I left. And still I have um, the friends from there. Mm -hmm. Still my friends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, again, foreigners, they come and they go. And it's, it's hard to retain, uh, like, you know, like strong relationship with foreigners. Mm -hmm. you, you might have an, an initial group of friends and then eventually uh, people get into a relationship and then they kind of disappear. <laughs> They're just like, ah. it's it's uh, it's it's a little bit. Of, it's how it works, and there are reasons for it. Yeah. So in Seoul, you feel it more because mm -hmm. there's more people and less time mm -hmm. with all of these people. So um, when people have options, so imagine someone who, who goes uh, on on uh, Sogetin, mm -hmm. if you're dating your Korean, right? Mm -hmm. These it's are blind dates. A blind date. It's, it's more of that happening. Mm -hmm. It's more of that. So yeah, if you're not in Seoul, mm -hmm. it's less of it. So they take yeah. more time with you. It's very true. Right. So it's just, it's a numbers game a little bit, which is sad. But yeah. essentially, that's how it is in any big city. I'm pretty sure that New York would have something the similar same, yeah. or yeah. Tokyo uh, yeah. also. Yeah. So um, if we don't want to feel a certain way, we have to lower expectation because we have to put ourselves in, in their shoes mm. or in the shoes of anyone who lives in a major city mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. where uh, art is booming. Mm. Um, you know, they're very aware that K-pop is selling out in the world. Right. So they have a lot of people who come now to discover the culture. Mm. Right. And they're a very proud people also. So they would prefer that we would learn the nice thing about them. Right. So they won't take too much time to explain to you what's wrong with the country. They'll, t they'll let you know what's great about the country. Very true. And I, I've seen the differences between like, like me as a tourist in Korea since 2013, just traveling here. Um, like it used to be a spectacle to walk with me mm. in the street. 
-hmm. like people would stop me and take pictures mm -hmm. you know um ask me all kinds of questions try to get with me in the bathroom <laughs> You know, like all that kind of stuff, and it still happens now. All these things, just and the flexing, right? Less they, of it. Oh yeah. At you. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, because you know, man, when strong. there's <laughs> lack of words. Yeah. What do you do? And you start, you start moving around, right? So True, they're like, I don't know if you know Korean, but you know this. <laughs> I've always heard that immigration officers yeah. are, are not friendly. Yeah, and it's like I don't know. In in my case, I mean, I I I, I have these funny. Um, interactions with them when sometimes you just go like this <laughs> at, the, at the airport in front of everyone else like you have like 200 people waiting behind and he goes like <laughs> or or i mean kids just uh you know wanting to take pictures with me jumping on me yeah. uh, jesus jumping on you oh yeah, yeah yeah they think you're strong and they <laughs> they're just like oh let me see <laughs> yeah but at the same time kids refusing to get into the elevator with me mm. yeah and both sides of the coin yeah but the thing is you get accustomed to it very quick yeah uh, there's less of it now mm -hmm. i'm talking i've been here a long time so i've seen the, the progress yeah but there was a time when uh my korean friend would just follow me all day we would just like hang out like holiday right um I guess it was like voting day or something. Mm -hmm. So we just do regular things like go watch a movie and then walk around. And then uh, it'd be like, like strangers would still come to us. Because if you're a Korean and you're next to me, it, people would assume that you were uh, a, uh, a Kyopo yeah. or a foreigner traveling with me to Korea. Yeah, yeah. And, and so they get a little bit of that treatment as well. And people would not stop themselves because especially if you're not in Seoul or if you're, uh, I guess, in a place in Seoul where there's less foreigners, mm -hmm. It's their one and only chance. That's, I mean, that's how they feel at that time. That's true. So if you wonder how can they, people, people could just walk up to you and ask you like crazy questions yeah. uh, and, and just like an avalanche of questions. Yeah. It's just, I came to the conclusion that people believe that, oh, wow, this is an exceptional situation. Mm. I must ask him now because yeah. I won't have that chance again. Yeah, and yeah. then they come up to you and yeah, I've been like sitting minding my own business at a restaurant, just eating, no phone, no Instagram, just me and my food. And then someone would just come and sit in front of me at the table and say, hi, my name is so-and-so. Uh, I'm Korean, but I've lived one year in, uh, in, in Germany. Yeah. And I just miss the days when I had foreign friends in Germany. Uh, my university days, amazing. Uh, <laughs> where do you come from? Yeah. Uh, how old are you? Yeah. What's your job? Uh, See, those type of interactions All of this are so within sweet, 30 though. seconds. Yeah. And I don't know you. Yeah. yeah back literally. home, that'd be very strange. Oh, like, who true. would do that back home, right? True. <laughs> true. Here it happens. It happens yeah. less, but still happens. Yeah. And um, again, so I had to like think about it. And like, uh, because how do you react? Because that's the, the question. Yeah. Do, do you uh, tell them that, uh, miss, I'm eating? Yeah. My time is precious to me. Leave me alone and don't be weird anymore. <laughs> or you you smile and you just, you know, go with it. Go along with it. Yeah. Because you don't know what their intention is. But the, I guess the more you go through it, then you can find out if they're trying to get you in the church or mm. they're, they're just genuinely curious about you. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, like, you know, the vast majority of the time, they're just good people who are very enthusiastic about meeting you mm -hmm. and they just want to know more, mm -hmm. which is a good thing because being ignored is worse. Yeah. True. Uh, like the big one of the biggest complaints is like we're, how we're ignored by the, the government mm. and then everything else, especially during COVID, you know. Right. So um, I've learned to appreciate everything. Again, yeah. I try to smile as much as possible, mm -hmm. put the love out. So then some of it comes back to me and I have a great experience in Korea. So on the line about talking about, you know, Koreans being genuinely curious about you, there's obviously two sides of the coin, right? Sometimes they're curious because they actually want to learn about you, but sometimes people go too far by like touching you or you know doing things that you're not comfortable with mm. how did you learn to like manage those two um i've learned to understand where they're coming from mm. uh, mentally again uh, i would say the, the vast majority of people that have um, come from a good place yeah they just want to know about you um, the ones who don't like you they won't really come and touch you so much mm -hmm. Um, unless, I mean, there's a specific reason because we work in entertainment, so we get touched a lot, I guess. Mm. But um, that sounds very weird. We get touched true. a lot. <laughs> that sounds very weird. And I and I often work without a shirt, so yeah. Just touched up by everyone. <laughs> Even weirder. Yeah, yeah. But it's 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 okay. Like when we're when we're working, we're working. Yeah. But how do you deal with that? Is um, I would always try to smile, and I guess I like it less now than I used to. Mm. I'm less re receptive to it now than I was 
in the past because mm -hmm. it used to happen so much that it became the touching sort of the, or just the, comments the touching the comments and everything it became the norm i still have like almost every week there's a there's an address an older man who comes in the subway and just pokes me it happened yesterday He's like Yikes. oh so i choose how i dress also yeah. so so uh if, if i'm wearing a tank top mm -hmm. i'm getting touched yeah by a man so an older man and he no but it's just because they have um it's not bad, by the way. It's they. Yeah. It's they think about their army days, and they're like, mm. "Wow, he knows what I went through, and he must be one of us." Or I don't know. But it's it's kind of a bond that Korean men tend to have, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's because of the army. Yeah. So, uh, older Korean men are not shy at all about coming to me like, "Wow, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah." You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's okay. So. Now the only thing is uh, the touching. I, I just I, I do one more step back. I, I step back a little bit so that they they get it. That I mean, I, I still bow to them and I smile to them mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. But now they they understand that it is okay. One wasn't once was enough. Like yeah, one like, poke let's is not enough. Do it again. Yeah, 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 let's not yeah. do it again. Yeah, yeah. because uh, yeah, it, it, it gets it gets old and. Because you know, you know. like I think when I when I was like oh that's weird is because I'm also putting myself in your shoes because. Mm -hmm. As a girl back in the day, people would just come up to me and like touch my skin or touch my hair, mm. um, which now it's come to this part where I don't like being touched by anyone. So that's why I was asking you like how you blurred those lines, mm -hmm. uh, how you unblurred those lines. But I think you took it in a very positive way. You were just like, I understand you're curious, but I'm a back up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't do it again. Um, I think for me, it was just like a little shocking. But for you, it yeah. seems like it wasn't too shocking. But it's not shocking anymore, right? It's not. It, I think it's not anymore because I know how to handle it. When it mm. happens and you don't know how to handle it, it's very freaking shocking. Yeah. Somebody just coming that and like true. rubbing themselves on you. You're just like, wait, what just happened? Oh, I've never had that though. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, no, no, no. I've been followed home. I've been, yeah, I've been, uh, yeah. Oh, that's stalkers. Actually, yeah. Oh, I've had plenty of stalkers <laughs> in Korea. It's, it's always <laughs> dudes too. I've been followed home, like all the way home. Why are dudes until following like, I, uh, you home? And the thing is like, if you, if you're, if you come from where I'm, where I come, yeah. uh, we don't like to have people walking in our blind spots mm -hmm. for more That's than five weird. seconds. Yeah. No, I, it's like I, I notice people yeah. who are, if a person is constantly in your in your blind spot, it's weird to me because I came from a place where that could be danger. Exactly. In, in, in Korea, for me, it's not really danger. It's just weird. Yeah, it's like. Well, and then I, and then I can't stop looking. And then yeah. you know, you take you transfer from one train to another. That person is still there. Like, okay, we, we might be going to the same place. I live in a university area, so there's a lot of people living there, a lot of young people too. Yeah. Um, but then you, I could walk home from the station, but I decided to take a bus. Mm. S takes the bus too. Okay, still in my blind, my blind spot. Yeah. Get home, uh, maybe a block away from home, because, you know, precautions. Mm. And then I just stern. <laughs> I said, what do you want? Yeah. And he's like, oh, uh, sorry, bro. What's going on? What's up? Excuse me. Uh, uh, so, sorry. Where you come from? Uh, After following uh, you for I like was, 15, was, 30 minutes? It was 11 p.m. I was not in the mood. Listen, bro. <laughs> We're not going to talk about this. I was not in the this. mood. <laughs> I was not so usually I, I, I keep saying you smile and everything, yeah. but I was not. It was 11 p.m. It was creepy. I was not in the mood and it, it was too close yeah, from home. Yeah. And I think I, I, I just said because he was like, hey, what's up? You know, when they turn like, so like, <laughs> like black so man. it was like black men. It's uh, black I have man. to be cool. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's up? Speak cool. What's up? <laughs> they start limping, holding their pants. And shit. It's like, be cool, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Putting yo in everything, by the way, is what they think is cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I was like, you know what? I don't want to answer your questions. You've been following me for a long time. Yes. He's like, oh, I, I, sorry, bro. I mean, I, I love Africa. And uh, I, I just wanted to make some friends. And, and then just turned away and just ran. Went out. Just ran out. Not Africa, first same, of all. Same direction. Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of that. It's like, bro, not everybody's from Africa. <laughs> I used to have the mailman like, bring packages to my home and, yeah. and say... And, and you know sometimes you open the door and the person is right there because yeah, yeah. you know you get the message like, yeah. oh, oh, oh. amazon and then it's like, africa with a big smile teeth out africa. if i was in africa i would be so offended because i'm african so i'll be like yes but for you it's like bro no no but also <laughs> that's weird <laughs> do you know what's crazy weird. a lot of koreans have guessed like i'm from kenya it's oh so okay, weird when me, they're like kenya and i'm like how did you know let me tell you about kenya yeah um <laughs> Tell you about Kenya. My, my first year, like month six. <laughs> yeah. So that's a long time ago, right? Yeah. Obama uh, is last year oh, of his term. I know where this. He is went back today. to. He went back. He went to Kenya. Yes, he to did. visit his, the the father's side of his family. Yes. I think it. 
it clicked in many people's head in Korea that, oh, black people from <laughs> USA, I guess the world of uh, yeah. North America, because yeah. Canada is the same now. Yeah, they're like, Canada's <laughs> America too. So. They, they are all from Kenya. <laughs> so... I, I would, you know, I told you I would go to Seoul like yeah. every two weeks on, on weekends yeah. and I would be waiting at the, the bus terminal yeah. and then, so I look like a tourist eventually, <laughs> you know, and then people would come, Africa, <laughs> that's the usual, but then it turned into Kenya. Yeah. Like Obama. I would go to the market and you know, people would give samples. Yeah. I don't want the samples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have food at home. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I told you I don't have cravings, right? So I would walk past the lady yeah, and then yeah. she, she would like impose herself. Like she would be, have one. <laughs> my name will go like more than one. I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> my, my, more than yeah. one too. And usually like only one to and, a And then boy. Kenya. He's like, oh, uh, no, uh, not, not Kenya. I'm uh, Canada. I'm, 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 I'm Canadian. And he's like, ah, but uh, like Kenya. You know, back in the day. Like, like before that. <laughs> like. Like, okay, we know what's on your password, but before that, I was like, no, there's I no, hate when people ask that there's, question, There's no the before way. that. I, I guess Bro. ethnically, I'm Haitian. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Haitian-Canadian, and I only say that when I'm in Canada, mm -hmm. because when I'm out of Canada, I'm Canadian, yeah. right? I was born in Canada. Yeah. So, um, Back in the day. <laughs> yeah. So I am, actually, I'm very Caribbean as well, yeah. but I'm Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> there's no before. <laughs> it's like, before Kenya? I would be offended if I was you because I'm like, I'm not from Kenya. Stop. It happens less. Uh, I, I, the funny one usually is like, where do you come from? Yeah. Canada. Rich country. <laughs> and you're just like, why, why do they think Canada is rich, by the way? I mean, we're very wealthy when it comes to resources. Uh, okay. The GDP of Canada is pretty much uh, usually 11 spot in the world and yeah. Korea is like 12. So we, we, we play between 10 and 11 and Korea between 11 yeah. and 12. Yeah. And I always tell people... Um, Korea is doing really well. It's doing very well. <laughs> like, have you ever heard of Samsung? It's doing very like, well. Yeah. LG? Mm -hmm. LG TV is number one in the world. You know? like, it's like yeah. a washing machine that talks to you and stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like smart The cars out here parking Smart fridges. Yeah. You, know, you, yeah. you guys do well. Okay? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. But so I explained to them that I guess wealth is different in the world. I mean, I could go deep in, in finance, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the, I guess the difference is the, the output. Yeah. Uh, Korea needs to be efficient with their resources because they don't have many. Mm -hmm. So they had to create a new resource, which is tech, mm -hmm. that they're able to export. What makes a country rich nowadays compared to 200 years ago is very different. Mm -hmm. So we're no longer agriculture-based. So before, if you had the spices and the mangoes, you were a rich country, which because it allowed you to have access to global trade. Yeah. You had something that the rest of the world wanted to Did purchase yeah. from you. Yeah. So that's outside money coming in that's rich. Today, um, mangoes can be purchased anywhere in the world. Uh, anywhere. We have places where we bring, it, we bring them in and we, have, yeah. we have treaties and everything. So we don't really need the mangoes to be from the Philippines, for example. We can get them from another place if the price is too high. Mm -hmm. So they lost their leverage. Mm -hmm. So because Korea doesn't have a lot of natural resources in the ground, so they had to create one, same as Japan, actually, uh, semiconductors and, and shipbuilding and everything. Mm -hmm. So that allows them, so actually hard work, yeah. because it's the creation of something that we don't have that we now need yeah. desperately in the world. Yeah. And a lot of countries have smart people. So you have to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. You have to maintain that level, that, uh, that, that investment level, mm -hmm. advancement level. So meanwhile, in Canada, we can just dig stuff from the ground, <laughs> and put it on the boat, and then we yeah. get the money in. So that's, I, I, I was told that it's a lot of Korean uh, from students, especially like high school and university students, they tell me that they know actually that it's a rich nation, mm -hmm. but they don't feel it yet because there's the need to perform at work. Oh. So there's the need to to be um, to to contribute. Yeah. Well, in Canada, people it's like four thirty. It's like you know what, the day is about all over. And then it's and like I'm done here, guys. Okay. Like work is work, and mm -hmm. after work starts life. Yeah. 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 So it's very different, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, I understand where it come, when it comes from, and that's why I can take it with a big smile is because it, the progress over the, nine, the last 10, uh, no, the evolution, not progress, the evolution over the, the last 9, 10 years that I've been like, traveling and living in Korea is tremendous. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I remember 2014 Korea and 2024 Korea. Yeah. Very different. But this is all good, but mm -hmm. how about like hot topics? Dating in Korea. <laughs> 
making friends because I talk a lot. <laughs> It's okay. okay. I actually wanted you to I, talk I, a little I bit. I can out talk her, no problem. F facts. <laughs> I thought I talk a lot, guys. Which is funny because yeah. I don't I don't talk online. Oh, what do you mean? I have a muted presence on social media. Oh, in social media. People don't know my voice, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I like that you can put all the tags on me, different mm. brands on me, and I don't have an opinion online, mm. so you can cancel me. That's uh, true. So, so when we start talking, that's when the yeah, problem Yeah, that's happens. when you get in trouble uh, sometimes. Facts. I wanted you to talk a little bit about, like, when you said you don't date expats. Like, the, the problem with expats dating expats. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not that I don't date expats. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I wrote, because we talked before, yeah, yeah. we had a whole podcast that went away. Yeah, two hours, guys, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so on my way here, I wrote some notes mm -hmm. just because I, I always think about stuff. Uh, I guess uh, note number one, uh, things I hear on different podcasts and different YouTube channels is like uh, dating in Korea and people say how trash people are and everything. Mm -hmm. And I wrote expats don't date expats, typically. Mm -hmm. And when they do, I go, oh, poor baby. <laughs> One of you is going to hurt. Yeah. Oh. And when you first said this, I didn't know what you understood. It's like I yeah. needed the explanation to be like, oh, I understand what you mean. It's, it's, it's a rational thing. So we need to remove the emotions and just think rationally. So, so think about it this way. If I'm on a one-year visa, been renewing for like nine years, still on a one-year visa, right? Mm -hmm. So you're only allowed to be here for a certain period of time, and that's if everything goes well, right? Mm -hmm. And that person is doing the same right now. And you might be um, month number six, and she might be month number three. Mm -hmm. And... Um, It takes time to click with someone and yeah. to develop into the you know friendship that gets into love and everything. And now you know what? Oh, it's time to go. Yeah. Or not. So people uh, go into a deep introspection at the end of the year, and then two months prior to that, or three months, the, your employer tells you, "Hey, do you want to stay or not?" Because we have to start recruiting. And then immigration sends you a memo say, "Oh, by the way, I hope you liked Korea. Time to renew in in 60 days." Mm -hmm. Uh, otherwise, you become illegal, yeah. and so now all of a sudden there is this this uh, added pressure that that gets put on into your relationship yeah. between two two expats, and it's very hard because again your your group of friends will be renewed constantly because people come and go. Well, lovers too because they come and go, and they might love you, but I mean, family is back home, and there's pressure, or uh, there's no. Um, There's no promotion in that job and, you know, there's a hard ceiling and that's that's how it's going to be for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. So if I want to have a career, I, I need to go back home. Mm -hmm. People study one thing and then they work in something else in Korea, for example, or in, in the expat world. Mm -hmm. So uh, they want they might want to go back to their normal life back home. Yeah. And and then, well, the next level to that, um, you're American, I'm Canadian. And like we, we slowly fall in love. And now I have three months left and you have an extra three months. Yeah. And then I, I get that letter and everything. And it's not like we can just go back home together necessarily. It's very yeah. complicated. It's hard. So there's like layers and layers of complexity that a regular relationship is already hard. It can be hard. It's beautiful, but it's, it, it, it comes with its load of um, mm -hmm. you know, trauma, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just doomed to failure just because of the nature of what we're doing here and our restrictions and mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. right? But then, then you start dating Koreans. Mm -hmm. And then I, I hear a lot about uh, it's so hard to make Korean friends and let alone date Koreans. Yeah. I was like, no, dating is hard everywhere. Uh, making friends is hard everywhere because it, it, it requires you to get out of your shell, take a risk, uh, have courage, and go talk to someone or respond to someone who's also you know, taking their courage in their hands and coming to you. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's complex as well. Yeah. But uh, add some layers to that. Uh, that person might not speak your language so well. Mm -hmm. And you might be learning, but still making mistakes. So miscommunication is a thing. And then, and then cultural differences. Uh, that person might be falling in love with you so deeply. But then when they go home and mom is like, uh, hey, uh, you're 29 and you're turning 30. Why aren't you married yet? Do you have someone? And it's like, yeah, I do have someone. Oh, where's she from? Oh, she's American. Yeah. Oh, uh, which type? And then <laughs> which type. what does she do? Because uh, yeah. money covers everything. But what does she do? Uh, what he or she? Education also sometimes. Education. Where yeah. did they study? Yeah. Is it California? Is it West Coast? East Coast? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's, there, there are so many things and we don't realize that uh, I always say um, everyone knows that compromises are necessary for, to have a good relationship. Uh, because uh, I always say, I don't need to like everything you like. Mm -hmm. I need to find joy in, in, in uh, seeing you happy doing what you do. Mm -hmm. 
right? So I don't necessarily need to take all of your hobbies. Yeah. But if I see you're happy, it makes me happy. Yeah. Therefore, what you do makes me happy as well. Yeah. That's compromising mm -hmm. because then I might need to like go to a rehearsal for dancing that you're into and it might be too sexy for me mm. but i understand that in her culture it's what she does you yeah, know, yeah stuff like that uh, that gets you about two three years mm -hmm. uh, past that it gets serious serious yeah meaning partnership union uh now uh sacrifices are needed mm -hmm. because am i going to stay in korea or are you going to come to my country mm -hmm. um do we enjoy where we're going do we need to make some adjustments mm -hmm. And, and now that person might be filtering a lot uh, the, on the Korean side, meaning there's a lot of judgment into like, you know, you're wasting your time with this person. You know, they're, they're only here for a short time yeah. until they go back home and, and such. And now they might not tell you that every day when they go to work and people share about their relationship, pressure. because in Korea, everyone needs to know where you stand. Uh, when it comes to like the hierarchy and everything, uh, are you single? Where, where where do you work? Everyone needs to know that, and that's how they can place in your box. And and these conversations, they don't really include foreigners, mm -mm. so um, they might not want you to be sad and tell you that every day they have to go and defend you. Yeah, they, and, and that's even harder if you're not from. Uh, one of the countries where they actually want to migrate. Yeah. Right. So they have to defend you even more in that case. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's hard to have a relationship with a, a, a Korean because of so many things that people naturally have to deal with. Uh, and on top of that, you had these uh, cultural differences, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, personality also. Yeah. It's personality yeah. differences too. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot that I wanted to say. Uh, like I, I mm -hmm. did some notes. I, I wrote when I woke up, I saw on Instagram or something. Mm -hmm. I said uh, something that said, um, the future starts when you wake up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Meaning all of that taking into account what can you do about it? Because mm -hmm. you're here now. I'm mm -hmm. here now. People are here now. Yeah. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, but all we can be is hopeful. Because one thing that makes me sad, actually, I'm not often sad, but uh, when people lose hope, mm -hmm. that's when I feel sad. Because we're not going in the right direction when people lose hope. It's, n it's not a good thing at all. Um, and there's a lot of this right now because of social media. There's, mm -hmm. there's uh, so, much, so much stuff the, the volume and it's always polarizing because this is how um, influencing work you need to yeah. make, you need people to click on your page so most of the time it's it's tears towards negativity because most most of the people want to hear about um the worst the of your stories yeah. right yeah. so i guess uh, people get burned in, in korea and in, in all of the world because um they hear all of the, the the sad stories but i would say stay hopeful there are great people out there uh some of my best friends is people i met uh, from actually doing physical activities mm -hmm. because when you suffer together it doesn't matter who's a doctor and who's yeah, not yeah. and then that's when you discover that you, you peel and you peel the layers and mm -hmm. then this a fabulous person here mm -hmm. and we have a whole life ahead of us mm -hmm. the future starts today you guys heard it here the future mm -hmm. starts today um we have a lot to talk about but because of the time we're gonna end it here today you, you're just gonna have to come back again that's that's It'll it be my you're, pleasure. you're gonna have to come back again because yeah. there's a whole lot that we talked about on the first time that we uh recorded this that we weren't able to talk about the second time we recorded this so fabio i think you're just gonna have to come back on another day if you want me to be back just just comment yes <laughs> <laughs> if you want him to be back don't comment. don't follow me home though but comment. <laughs> <laughs> please don't because that is very weird but <laughs> Are you comfortable with us ending the episode here? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Anyways, guys, that was it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are a podcast listener, don't forget to give us five stars so we can get up in the algorithm. And if you are a YouTube listener, also don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And also subscribe because around 80 to 90% of you guys are not subscribed. So please make sure you subscribe. And thank you again, Fabio, for coming on the show. Follow, <laughs> follow our socials. Yes, his socials, all the socials will be down below and I'll also leave them on the screen so you guys can follow his socials. You can see the hot bod. The mm, the mm. <laughs> <He's like laughs> so make sure you guys check out the description. <laughs> me too. I'm just, kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. No. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that was it for today's episode and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, guys.